In this lesson, we're going to look at the speed controls and how they affect the Final Cut timeline. They're located in the center of the screen. There's a downward arrow that will allow you to click and expose the speed controls. They can also be accessed by clicking on the little downward arrow that you see in the clip itself. And there are the fast, slow, normal and custom controls that you see at the top of your main listing over here. To access the speed control in the clip, you would use the command R. So if we select this clip here, put the playhead over the clip and press command R, that brings up those speed controls there. So let's look at the speed controls as they show in the main listing. So first of all, let's go through them as they're listed. So we will select a clip in the timeline. And by selecting slow, we can decrease the speed of that clip to 50%. And you'll see that 50% is showing in the timeline. Here. Now, when you change the speed of a clip, you also change the speed of the audio as well. The fast option gives you the same sort of result, except it speeds up the clip. Normal will return the speed of the clip to normal. So if we select four times the speed, you can see then that the clip is now speeded up and also the audio, of course. By clicking on that clip now and returning that to normal, then it comes back at normal speed. Of course, you could do the same thing by clicking on the downward arrow and selecting normal there. The hold option will allow you to hold a portion of the clip, in other words, still frame a portion of the clip and then go back to the motion. So if we place the playhead in the middle and click hold, then you can see that the audio has been broken. There's a red indicator on the side. It plays normal speed through here. When you change the speed of a clip, the audio is always affected. So it's a good idea to detach the audio before you make the speed changes. To do that, right click in the timeline and then select detach the audio. Now, if we select hold, when you play through, the audio continues in the background. Just pressing Command Z now will return the clip back to what it was previously. Now let's have a look at the blade speed. It will cut the clip and allow you to change the speed either side of that cut. So by dragging to the left, we speed up that portion of the clip. And dragging to the right, we slow down that portion of the clip. You can also double click the actual transition by editing that and clicking on this little film strip, you can change the position as to where the transition affects the source of the clip. Next one we want to have a look at is the custom operation. Now the custom operation is simply all of the above in one window. So we can forward or reverse the clip. You can speed it up by increasing the speed here. So if we type 200 in there, and press return, then the clip is speeded up. Take that back to 100. Ripple simply means that where we previously asked for 200%, that speeded up the clip, then the rest of the timeline came into place. So just to do that again, press 200, keeping the ripple there, return, you'll see how the rest of the clips came in. If we do the same thing and turn off the ripple, and we'll take it back to 100, you'll see that the clip has not changed in length. It simply changed the speed within that length of clip. So we can change it by rate, but you can also change it by duration. So you could type in the time that you would like the clip to run there. Return that to normal by pressing the curly arrows. If we come back here now and we look at reverse clip, we need to select the clip click on reverse, that simply puts the clip into reverse. So the boats are going to go backwards. You can reset the speed here, which will reset it to normal. 
to explain automatic speed, we need to consider the frame rate of the project. Currently this project, it's Sydney Harbour Clips, and there it is in the browser, Sydney Harbour Clips. If we go over to the inspector, we can see that that's 25 frames per second. If we select the clip in the timeline and look over here, that's also 25 frames per second. And that's good because the clip is the same speed as the project. And of course, if you remember from early stages of learning Final Cut, but when you're creating your project, you can change the frame rate to suit. And Final Cut, if you don't change the frame rate, will simply create the frame rate of your project according to the first clip that you import into it. So what happens when the clip that you want to insert into your project has a different frame rate than the project itself? If we look at this clip up here in the browser and come over to the inspector, we can see that this is a 50 frame per second frame rate. And we know that our timeline is 25 frames per second. So if we bring that into the project now, Final Cut is smart enough to be able to run it at the normal frame rate of the project. So you won't see any difference between the 25 frame per second clip or the 50 frame per second clip. But there is an advantage in having the faster or the bigger frame rate clip in the timeline. So I'm going to select the clip and press the E key and there's the clip there. If we just play that now you can see it's playing through at normal speed. If we now come up to automatic speed and select that what happens is because this is a 50 frame per second clip in a 25 frame per second project the clip has twice as many frames as the project so it's going to play at half the speed and of course the audio is at half the speed now we've selected here preserve pitch so you don't notice that the audio is particularly out of pitch it's a good representation of it the real advantage of this situation is where you've filmed with, say, a 240 frame per second frame rate, and then when you bring that into Final Cut, you can then have it run at a much slower speed, but still be using real frames rather than interpolation when you have frame blending and optical flow. You'll learn about those later in this lesson. The speed ramp will allow you to ramp the speed of the clip. So in this case, from normal through to zero. So it will start at 100% of speed and then gradually go down to a still frame. When you select that, it breaks the clip up into several different components and you can then adjust so we can see that it's slow at the beginning so we could bring that up to a hundred percent and it's 13 percent at the end so we could take that down to a really slow speed when you play this now it goes through at normal speed transitions to a slightly slower speed and so on until it gets down to virtually no motion. Again, the audio is affected, so it would be a good idea if you wanted to continue a normal audio sound that you detach the audio as we did previously. You can also, as we did previously, double click on the transition and change the location within the clip of where those changes and speed are double clicking edit and then just move that to a different location i'm going to undo all of that now and we'll look at the next option which is instant replay what instant replay does is allow you to replay the clip 
at either 100%, that's normal speed, or half speed, or 25 or 10%. So let's select 50% to start with. The original clip is here, and then it's slowed down and redone again, and you'll notice that instant replay as a title has been added. That's this purple bar here. You can, of course, delete that if you wish. Under Instant Replay, you also have the ability to rewind. Now, what rewind does is it adds a clip in the middle, going backwards, so it's rewinding it, repeats the clip at the end here. So we could shorten that by speeding it up, and you could simply rewind and then play again. So normal clip and rewinding, and then playing again. So it's like an instant replay, but it actually shows you the rewind. We'll undo those. The next option is jump to markers. It requires us to have a look at a slightly different video clip to get the effect. So I'm going to select another clip, and this is a bridesmaid walking down the aisle. You'll get the effect in a minute because you need to have something that's lengthy. We need to put in some markers. Markers are put in by pressing the M key and then by selecting the clip and coming up to jump to markers, you can cut to each of those markers and take out three up to 30 frames in each location. So when we click this and we look here, if we zoom into this location now, 30 frames have been reduced. There is, though, a slight jump, and if I play it through for you now, you'll notice a jump in the clip. Just that little jump there. Probably not used a lot. Moving on from there, now this clip has been slowed, we can use the video quality options, frame blending and optical flow. The frame blending is best where a clip is reduced in speed just slightly, maybe to something like 60%. And then if you slow it any further, then optical flow should be selected. Frame blending will blend between the frames, a little bit like a key framing. And optical flow is an artificial intelligence that adds frames. Now tied in with those is to preserve pitch and to preserve speed transitions. If we turn off the transitions now, you'll see there are no transitions between the changes in speed in this particular clip. If we come in now and select transitions, then it adds transitions in there, a little bit like those transitions you saw in the speed ramping option. Again, you can double click on that transition and change the transition point. To hide the retime editor, it's Command R, that's a toggle switch, so Command R will also turn it on. So if I select that now, it's gone. If I press Command R, it comes back again. The markers in the clip can be removed by going to the Mark menu in the menu bar and selecting Delete. An interesting observation is that if you were to use the range tool over a selection of clips, then some of the speed controls will work and some won't. So let's just select the range tool, select range, that's R, and we'll select a range over several clips. So we've got some over a 25 frame per second clip, over a 50 frame per second clip, and then other clips in the timeline. If we come up now and select slow motion, we can select that to 50%, and you'll see that the range has been reduced to 50%, and the item outside of the range is still at 100%. Let's just redo that. We can do the same with fast speed, so that will work the same as a slow-mo. You can return it all to normal, but the speed ramp doesn't work, nor does the instant replay. But interestingly enough, you can rewind. So we could select two times, then you'll see that it's rewinding at twice the speed in those locations. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and like. Also press the bell so you'll be notified of further videos.